Hey, today I'm just going to take a few minutes, and um, if you're working on one of these older cars, um, it's uh, called OBD1 Diagnostics, and you're trying to work on the engine, uh, you, you really need a scan tool. The, the GM did a nice job. I, I can't talk about the other manufacturers. But GM had a lot of tests early on that you could run that were listed in the service manual where you didn't need a scan tool. You could, with some work, uh, run special tests, you could jumper things, you could go in with a digital voltmeter, um, um, what was the, uh, uh, you could measure dwell with a dwell meter. Uh, so there, there were ways to work around it, uh, but frankly some of those were, were challenging and, uh, and time consuming. And the best was if you could have a scan tool. Now, we're looking at cars that are you know, made in the 80s or early 90s, and there aren't very many tools around anymore. GM had what they called Tech One, and I think you can pick some of those up used these days. Uh, then they went to what they called a Tech Two, and today it's, um, uh, I'm trying to remember, GDS, I think they call it, but it's a, it's a system that runs off a laptop with software. Uh, that's, that they use in their facilities. Um, in any case, um, I had to hunt around to find a tool that would do OBD1 work. What I'm going to show you today is the tool that I bought, and I'll run you through just a little bit of what it can do, because uh, quite honestly, the, uh, sort of the manual that comes with it is not real detailed on the OBD-1. They have m much detail on the OBD-2 features. Uh, OBD-1, they give a good description, but I think every car is a little bit different in what it provides. So I'm going to show you on my tuned port 305 uh, from 1985 uh, what you can see with this tool. And to start off with, uh, this is an Actron tool. It's a 96 90, CP 9690. Um, it's, I would say, is it's their most capable tool. It, it's the one, it covers OBD1 1984 through 1995, GM and Ford. And then they have cables to go GM, Ford, Chrysler, and Toyota. And Chrysler and Toyota coverage is from 1989 to 1995. I'm really worried more about the GM application, but they do come. It comes with this nice little bag, and in the bag is a set of cables that you can use for the other manufacturers, as well as an OBD2 cable. Um, I can plug this into my uh, 2019 Chevy Suburban, and it will read codes. It won't. Um, the instructions that come with this say that that it will read many of the manufacturer's codes up to 2013. Beyond 2013, I think they rely on you being under warranty and they don't provide that information. So on my 19 Suburban, um, if, I, if it sets check engine light, I can read that. If it was something in the transmission or the airbag, that I can't seem to, uh, seem to access. But today's discussion is you know, what can you get out of one of these tools uh, on OBD-1? I'll go plug it in in a minute, uh, but it, it comes with a nice long cable. Um, the jumper attachment is here. When you, use this, when you use this attachment, then that's the OBD-1 GMALDL connector. Uh, you, can disconnect, you can disconnect this and plug the OBD-2 connector on it. Uh, the tool does have batteries. You can power it up disconnected. And it will uh, come up and let you read data that you've taken in the past. So there's a, you know, there's a review data feature here. And I've had 1985 Camaro. And I can go look at recordings and I have some recordings I could play back. But And it says English or metric. English. Yeah, okay. Let's see if the, com 
if the camera will read it. There we go. So you end up with these different parameters. Um, on this car, you can get the third gear switch, the fourth gear, where the air conditioning is requested, the coolant temp, the EGR duty cycle, engine RPM, rich and lean, fan request, and I think that fan request is fan request from the air conditioner, not from normal thermal. Uh, if the battery voltage is high, it'll give you IAC position. And then down at the bottom, well, let's see here. Then uh, down at the bottom, it'll tell you how many frames. But I'm going to click through the rest of the parameters. Uh, injector pulse width, whether it's closed or open loop, uh, grams per second of airflow, and that number is really large. Uh, in doing some hunting, I had somebody who's good with controllers come back and say, I, he thought I should divide that by 255. Um, it's, a, it's off by a scale factor uh, based on how the, this tool is reading the ECM. So that's, it's, it's not raw grams per second. Uh, MAT, which is the uh, manifold air temperature, it's in the plenum on the, uh, on the tuned port unit. Then there's uh, oxygen sensor in millivolts, the cross counts, and then the last one is where, what gear are you in? Are you in park neutral or are you in drive? I got a little ahead of myself here when I said the park neutral switch was the last parameter. Uh, there are actually uh, five more below. Uh, the first is the PROM ID. The second is TCC lockup status, where the converter clutch is on or off. Uh, whether the TC solenoid is on or off, uh, TPS sensor voltage in volts, and the vehicle speed in miles per hour. And uh, finally, just a note that the first item in the, in the list is the third gear switch. Uh, as far as I can tell on this car, there is no third gear switch, and that one is always on. The ECM apparently has a signal that says it's on permanently. Um, that's the only other anomaly or, or issue that I see in the data. And you can click through, find the buttons here, um, you can click through the frames, I think around, a, around 140 or 150 snapshots. Let's see what we end up with here. I'll just hold the button down. It says 64, oh, 64 snapshots, 143 seconds and and this is a recorded piece if it was obd2 they offer different kinds of freeze frame data and they offer uh, graphing for obd1 you don't get graphing that's the best recording that you'll get is snapshots and i think it depends on your ecm the ecm in this car is relatively slow in its communication rate i think in some of the newer ones you may get a faster data rate than this one but it's been very helpful when I was diagnosing the engine to be able to put this in record and tip in and go down the road and collect a set of data and then come back here later and, and uh, take a look at it. So I'm going to go set this up in the car and uh, we'll be back in a minute. Uh, first thing you need to do is you take the GM ALDL tool and it connects it's hard to get a good look. It connects under the dash here, underneath the tack on the Camaro. There's a, a, a port. And I have the, there's a, a lid that normally is over this. I have the lid taken off for the moment. There we go. Okay. So you wiggle it into place. Um, OBD2 cars are self-powered, but OBD1 cars um, require a 12-volt plug. And so it's pretty handy on this one. We got a cigarette lighter plug up high here. So then we can get right in here to the screen. And you can see you have uh, vehicle diagnostics. You got the ability to print. 
um, and review data. Well, I already just showed you the review data. The uh, right now, if I say vehicle diagnostics, if I say vehicle diagnostics, um, it it will auto select. It will check on an OBD car. Uh, you can see some of the different ones I've had plugged in. Um, and here's the one for my 85 Camaro. Uh, you can otherwise you select manual entry and, and tell it what your year your car is. Alright, so the way this works is you turn the key off for 10 seconds, which it is off, and then you turn it on, and then hit enter. Now it's reading reading codes. And it says there are two, which I know I haven't cleared. Um, if I hit that, it says I have a code 42 for the ignition uh, spark timing. And that's because I had it disconnected to set the, set the timing, um, just to do a timing check. And then number two, is a 44 oxygen sensor lean and on this car on this ECM all of these codes are set as current even if they're not current I, I really need to go disconnect the battery and clear them I just haven't done that you cannot clear them from the tool uh, you have to go pull power and the reason this one's lean is uh, I had knocked the inadvertently uh, knocked off the hose that connects from the intake manifold to the charcoal canister and uh, that was a big enough vacuum leak to make it go lean. So now I can go back and say okay data stream and here we can hit view data and it'll come and bring those up and it, you can say entire data list or you can set a custom list. Normally I just do the entire and this is that same screen as it showed what it recorded. So the switches are off, the coolant's 95 degrees, EGR duty cycle, engine RPM, it's all just sitting here nice. The IAC is wide open because we're not running. Of course, open loop. That's what everything is reporting. Prom ID. Oh, I didn't go all the way to the bottom. TCC lockup and... Uh, and TPS are on here also. I guess I didn't go all the way to the bottom of the list before. But it will record all the way to the bottom. So I'm going to go light it up here. This is the active version, engine running, it's uh, sitting in open loop, the uh, the engine's, uh, engine's cold so things are, are set up a little bit high. I'm set up a little bit high. Um, airflow and such are a little higher than normal. But uh, here we go. Already, it's already dropped into closed loop. It's a good oxygen sensor now that I've got, got it replaced. But you're getting uh, cross counts and uh, you can see the oxygen sensors responding and we're going rich to lean, rich to lean. And the idle of about 950. And one, uh, one interesting feature of this tool on these ECMs is that when I plug in the tool, it raises the idle speed. So you'll see right now the idle speed in neutral is over 1,000. It's, it's almost 1050. And um, somewhere between 1,000 and 1,100 is where it will run in, in park or neutral when normally you would expect it to be down 
around 700, 750-ish. Uh, it's a feature that I don't know why they did it. Uh, perhaps it was a way of uh, helping the engine, uh, keeping it running in an engine that wasn't running well, but uh, this caused me a lot of um, concern because I ran this tool while I was debugging the engine and I couldn't get the idle down. It kept running fast like this and if you go back and listen to the exhaust uh, the, the timing is also increased and the timing is high enough that you start getting some uh, random misfire in neutral. So when you unplug the tool it calms right down but but those are the main features those are the parameters that you can get then you can as I said you can go into uh, reviewing data or recording data um, it does it does give you a list of acronyms that I don't use that very often but but they're in there. Uh, I said print, code lookup, system setup. If you go into system setup, there are just a number of different features that you can have and, and uh, modify. But I'll tell you for an OBD1 system, this really works pretty well. And And has saved me a, a lot of trouble. So you could hear the difference in the idle. What that is is when I dropped out of when the when I went out of the tools um, display when it's not getting the data stream, then the idle drops back down. So right now, see we're at 975, and when I back out. drops down on the tack, it's around 750. So, in any case, this is uh, this is what I've been using. It's been very helpful and uh, it's one of the few OBD1 tools that you can still find out on the market. So, that's all for now. So just in conclusion, uh, I highly recommend this tool. It's very useful on an OBD1 car. Um, I, it's been invaluable to me. Uh, once again, it's it's a CP9690 Actron tool. Um, list price, it's actually come down since I bought it. Um, I looked at Actron's website and it's about $225 list. Um, I bought mine from Summit Racing Equipment, and I see they're currently listing at around 210. Uh, so it's um, not a bad price for what you get, and you can use it on your late model uh, OBD2 cars as well. So uh, good tool. Uh, if you need one of these for an old Camaro, it uh, it should serve you well.